there were many attempts made on his life, as reenacted in the Summer Palace by members of the Peking Theater. a very mysterious figure in some ways, and this is what has interested Chinese historians in him for centuries. Uh, he was uh, in search of immortality. He didn't want to die. He had heard a story that uh, in the eastern coastal area of China, there were some islands where sages and immortals lived, and he wanted to find these areas. He became increasingly preoccupied with this in his later years. One day, as his search for immortality continued, a magician asked for an audience with the emperor. The magician spun tales of a wondrous place to the east, where sages knew of a liquid potion which granted immortality. The emperor insisted on all the details of the miracle potion. The magician complied and even provided directions to the mysterious land. Shortly thereafter, the emperor embarked on his journey. It is ironic that during his travels, while trying to find eternal life, he died at the age of 49. During his lifetime, he exerted tremendous effort seeking immortality because of an inordinate fear of death. Even at the early age of 13, Shi Chuangdi began construction of his own tomb so that he would be ensured protection in the afterlife. Using 700,000 laborers, the Emperor spent 37 years building a lavish subterranean palace to protect him after his death. His grand design was an enormous map of China. Each city was represented in miniature, complete with rivers of mercury. The Emperor himself was to be laid in a coffin on a huge dragon boat. Statues of members of his personal army were placed to guard the Emperor in death. Legend has it that over 24,000 clay soldiers were buried with him. The legendary location of this tomb was said to be under a huge artificial mound called Mount Li in the province of Senshi. Stories had been passed down that an army of clay soldiers had been buried near the tomb, but none had ever been found. Then, in 1974, in this quiet rural setting, a great discovery was made. Some workers digging a well near Mount Li were amazed when they unearthed strange clay figures. Could these be part of the fabled buried army of the Emperor Shi Chuangdi? In a peaceful rural area of Senshi province, 500 miles west of Peking, these farmers planted and harvested grain. When the clay soldiers and horses were discovered in 1974, scientists realized this might be part of the legendary buried army of the Emperor Shi Shuangdi. If so, it would be one of the greatest archaeological finds of all time. Some clay miniatures had been found in royal tombs before. They represented guards, wives and servants placed there to care for the monarch after death. The figures found near the emperor's tomb, however, were life-size, and there appeared to be an entire army of them. When the enormity of this discovery was realized, a huge structure was built over the site of the buried clay army. After further investigation, archaeologists found the army was larger than at first imagined. 
the Emperor's subterranean legions occupied an area of over three acres. More than 600 life-size figures have so far been uncovered, and test digs indicate there will be at least 5,000 more. Over a period of six years, hundreds of skilled men and women have continued the painstaking work of restoration. One of the original archaeologists at the site discusses the significance of this extraordinary find. It was on this very spot that the well diggers discovered the first clay figures beneath the earth. As archaeologists continued to dig, they were profoundly moved by what they saw. An entire army, battle lines formed, ready for attack. Rank upon rank they stood, silently waiting. They had stared into the darkened silence as 22 centuries slowly ticked away. The only sound, the snap and sag of a pottery neck as it slumped against the ground in some earth tremor. Each face is unique. Perhaps each one is the portrait of a long forgotten warrior. The logistics of creating this vast assemblage were staggering. An artist imagines the scene as it was over 22 centuries ago. Thousands of skilled craftsmen spent their entire lives on the project. Each figure was carefully modeled in clay, oven fired, and then placed in formation. It was often the practice to bury live members of a monarch's personal guard with him at his death. If these are indeed the likenesses of Xi's guards, their loyalty to the emperor may have rested in the knowledge that they would not be required to die with him. A museum has been built adjacent to the site where these remarkable examples of ancient Chinese art can be seen and admired. Details such as the bronze bridles found on some of the horses can be studied. A high degree of artistry, even on such a massive scale, was far above that believed possible for this early period. The armor worn by the men and the different dress and hairstyle denoting rank or occupation were carefully reproduced by the artisans. Much can be learned here of the Xi dynasty and of its emperor who built the wall. Perhaps his vast clay army was yet another kind of wall. The controversy over the emperor Xi Chuangdi continued for centuries. The positive view stresses his unification of China. The negative view of the emperor points out the tremendous cost in human lives of his vast projects and his repression of scholastic learning. There can be no doubt, however, that shortly after his death, China was in turmoil. A commoner named Shen stepped from the ranks of the soldiers and inspired a revolt against the weak son of late Emperor Shi Shuangdi. This soldier became the first emperor of the Han Dynasty. The Shi Dynasty fell but the Great Wall of China has remained for 2,000 years. Often neglected, in some places it is little more than a pile of rubble repaired many times to a semblance of its former condition. Today, the many walls in China are merely decoration, attracting visitors from around the world. The greatest of these walled palaces is the forbidden city of Peking. It is the most perfect example of the individual isolation of early Chinese rulers. Only the emperor or empress, their close relatives, servants and high officials were ever allowed through these gates. 
The Great Wall today represents a eulogy to Emperor Xi for the many positive accomplishments of his rule. It is also a huge stone epitaph upon which is written the horrors that he perpetrated. Perhaps it is a timeless comment on the futility of isolation. Late in the evening, when the last visitor is gone and the wind blows again from the north, the sounds of the dead seem to cry out to us in the whining and sighing of the winds along the parapets. One might ask the question, did the Great Wall keep the world out or did it imprison the Chinese within? As with many other great works of man, was it worth the thousands upon thousands of lives it cost to build? Coming up next,